so I had a little baby girl called Maisie and 18 weeks after having her, I um, felt a bit tired and then I had a really bad cold and a cough. So I went to the doctors, had a chest X-ray and then it came back that I had Hodgkin's lymphoma. It was something you never ever want to be told. Um, and it was something just, you know, I had a little girl, well, we had a little girl and it was, yeah, the hardest thing was telling telling her we were all in the bedroom just messing about and um, I said Maisie come and sit on mummy's lap and she came and sat on my lap and she went yes mummy and I just said oh you know mummy hasn't been very well you know mummy lost her hair well unfortunately mummy's got to go to heaven and she, I started to cry then Tom got upset and then Maisie was just yeah she just burst out crying and Tom your life must have just stopped. Yeah, it, it did. It's just literally just get hit, boom, hit you. And as Tiff says there, alluded to, but what she didn't say is like of, of how brave she's been and how outstanding she's been over the four years. Did you start to plan at the end of your life? Yes, I had sorted everything out. Um, unfortunately, my husband and I do quite a lot of his admins, so I had to sort that out and show him how to do bits and bobs and passwords and all of this. Um, and then I set up like a fairy garden for my daughter. I did a, um, a memory box for her, which went through from the age of four. I've still got her birthday card in the memory box now, um, all the way through to her getting married. And there were things for her wedding day, engagement, and things for her future partner or whatever. Um, so I had gone through everything. Did you start to prepare for life without Tiffany? I, I suppose I didn't really know, and I always said Tiffany asked me those questions, and I always replied with, I don't really know the answer until I'm in it. And that was a God's honest truth. I just didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know whether I could carry on playing rugby. I didn't know whether it was like, right, Maisie, we're, we're going to have to go back to Norfolk, and, you know, I can't deal with all this sort of stuff, living in this house and all these sort of bits. So. And that was that was the honest truth. I just didn't know. Mm. So luckily, I haven't had to answer those questions or really think about them. It's been an extraordinary four years, especially the last year. Um, just tell me about the moment when you were told that you were in remission. I fell ill in February, so I had to go to hospital, and they weren't too sure what was the problem, so they had to scan me. And I just said, "Can you just check my Hodgkin's lymphoma?" My consultant came in and told me my results, and just went, "Just to let you know, your scan's completely clear." and I was in absolute shell shock. I just didn't know what to do. Couldn't really celebrate because I was actually ill at the same time in hospital. So the next thing was I told mum and Tom and they were just, yeah, amazed. And then I rang my dad, I think, well, I think he dropped the phone. And how has Maisie taken the news? All I remember that the best moment was when I took her to school the next day and she just ran in to all her school friends and teach and just went, my mummy's not going to heaven anymore. Mm. And it was just like, it did feel like the weight of the world had just come off your yeah. shoulders and everyone's shoulders a little bit. You tried a lot of different alternative cancer therapies and one of them was the cannabis oil. Yes. Do you think that contributed to saving your life? I, I can't be 100% sure exactly what cured me. I did a lot of alternative treatment. You know, it could have been my donor, it could have been my nutritional plan, it could have been, you know, the THC oil that I was on, it could have been an ENS cosmetic machine that I was on. So I can't 100% put my hands up to say that it was the THC cannabis oil, but I would definitely say it has a big effect, a help on me for like my pain and everything like that. I was literally waiting to die basically, so I um, had nothing to lose, so I didn't want to give up hope and I just wanted to persevere and just keep going because I wanted to have that family time with my husband and daughter. And what's it been like since, in the last three months since you found out the great news? Yeah, well to start off with the sort of first month I was sort of just in shock, I just, I didn't believe it but I did believe it because I felt so much better. I had more energy. I think it's the little things, <clears throat> little things in life which you take for granted, granted sometimes. Yeah. And then you have a reality check and you think, oh, actually, these, these are just the best bits, you know. And, and But we had some time up here and we had some time in, in Norfolk as well, which is very good. And we spent it with some people who have supported us so much in, in this in this horrid time. And yeah. actually, I think the one thing, the support has been unbelievable. Amazing. Um, from everyone, you know, the rugby, you know, family have been very good to us all. Old Tiffany's back, definitely. <laughs> Mrs. Organised and Mrs. Uh, ready to go, take life on fully.